Welcome geometry students. Today we're going to learn how to use Euler's theorem and look at an introduction to the vocabulary related to solids. So first of all, let's talk about what a polyhedron is. A solid bounded by polygons. So keep in mind polygons cannot have curves. And these are called faces that enclose a single region of space. So if you note, I have an example, two polyhedras. We have a prism and a pyramid. The big idea is all of the side lengths are polygons. So we have triangles, rectangles, octagons, etc. Those are our examples of polygons. And then we have things that are not polyhedras. And the biggest reason why these are not polyhedras is they have curves. And keep in mind, polygons do not have curves. So cylinders, cones, and spheres will all be something we look at this unit, but they are not polyhedrons. The next definition you need to know is what a prism is. A prism is a three-dimensional shape. It's a solid specifically with identical or similar bases. And the sides are going to be parallelograms. So this is the first unit where we're really moving from two-dimensional objects to three-dimensional objects. So for example here we have a triangular prism, a hexagonal prism, a rectangular prism, and an octagonal prism. So in your annotations, you can make a note that we name prisms or pyramids using the base. So since this has a base of a, of a triangle, we call it a triangular prism. Keep in mind the big reason why this is a prism is the bases are the same object. So we have two congruent triangles making up the base, and then the sides are, in this case, a rectangle that joins them. We'll come back to the next part. Here we have a hexagonal prism because each base is a hexagon, a six-sided figure. Again, we have a rectangular prism. Now here you can take your pick about which rectangle is the base. It could be this or it could be the one off to the side. Um, any of those faces could be considered the base. And then finally, the octagonal prism has an octagon or an eight-sided figure for um, the base and that's why we call it an octagonal prism. The big idea when you look at these shapes is if there is a non-rectangular side, meaning a non-rectangular face, then we have to use that to use the base. In other words, since there's a triangle as a face, that has to be the base. Since there's a hexagon, that's the base. Here any of the sides could be a base, and here the octagon has to be the base. So it's always the non-rectangular side if there is one, that is going to be considered the base. That's very important to understand. If we talk about this triangular prism, F stands for the number of faces, V for the number of vertices, and E for the number of edges. So the faces are just the polygons that make up the sides. So we have one triangle, another triangle, those are the two bases, and then we have three rectangles that are connecting that. So a total of five faces. The edges, well, the edges are just simply the line segments that join that. So if you think about it, we have one, two, three edges on the triangle, another three on this, and then we have that same number connecting the bases. So that would be a total of nine edges. I went out of order there a bit. And then vertices basically are the points. So again, if we look at the shape, the points where the edges intersect, we'd have three on this space and another three on this space for a so total of six vertices. All right, let's talk about the hexagonal prism. Well, since we know there's six sides, we basically know there's going to be six parallelograms connecting the bases. So we have one hexagon, two hexagons, and then six parallelograms connecting that for a total of eight faces. The number of vertices would be six on each base, so for a total of 12 vertices. And the number of edges, we'd have six edges on one base, six edges on the other, and then six more edges connecting the bases for a total of 18 edges. Go ahead and take a minute to pause the video and answer the next two to find the number of faces, vertices, and edges. All right, for a rectangular prism, you should have found that there are six faces, eight vertices, and 12 edges. And for an octagonal prism, you should find that there's 10 faces, 
16 vertices and 24 edges. So just make sure you're counting carefully. Now we're going to talk about a pyramid. So we just said a prism has to have two identical or similar bases. A, a pyramid is a 3D solid with a polygon for the base and the sides are triangles which meet at a point. <clears throat> so if you notice, we don't have two bases any longer, we just have one. Same thing is going to be true if there is a non-triangular side, that has to be the base. So here we have a triangular pyramid, which meets at this point, a heptagonal pyramid, which meets at this point, rectangular pyramid meeting at a point, and an octagonal pyramid meeting at a point. So think about the pyramids in Egypt. They all look very similar. Some have different size bases, some have different shaped bases, but they all meet at a point. So a triangular pyramid has a triangle for the base. This heptagonal, heptagon meaning seven sides, means that the base is a heptagon. A rectangular pyramid has a rectangle for the base. And the octagonal pyramid, my apologies, this is supposed to be a square pyramid, since clearly that is not an octagon as the base. So please make that correction. If we look at the triangular pyramid, we have four total faces. We have the base as one, and then three more triangles to connect that to the point. The vertices, there's three vertices along the base, and then one more where each of the sides um, intersect. So that's a total of four vertices. We have three edges at the base and then three more to connect at the point, making a total of six edges. Go ahead and pause your video to find the rest. Okay, we should have found for a heptagonal pyramid that there are five faces, eight vertices, and 14 edges. Rectangular pyramid and square pyramid are very similar so they have five faces each, five vertices each, and eight edges. Let's look at example one. It says to, says to name the following solids. Keep in mind we're going to name the solids based on two things. Number one, what the base is, and number two, if it's a pyramid or a prism. So since this particular meets at a, a point, we know that that's a pyramid. Now we want to look at the base. The base is the non-triangular sides. Well, in this case, it's a pentagon, so we call it a pentagonal pyramid. Here we have not a pyramid. There's not any point where they meet, but there are two congruent bases that are triangles. So this is a triangular prism. This is not a rectangular prism, even though three of the faces are rectangles. So be aware of that. And uh, we could not use a rectangle as a base here. It has to be one of the triangles, or both of the triangles, I should say. This again meets at a point, so this is a pyramid. And the base is a triangle, so it's a triangular pyramid. All right, Euler's theorem. Euler's theorem tells us that the number of faces, or F, vertices V and edges E of a polyhedron are related using this formula. F plus V is equal to E plus 2. So in other words, the number of faces added with the number of vertices of any polyhedron should equal the number of edges of that polyhedron added with 2. Let's take a look at how we could use that. Example 2 says to use Euler's theorem to find N. The number of faces is equal to 11 the number of edges is equal to n, and the number of vertices is equal to 11. So f is 11, e is our unknown, and the number of vertices is 11. So we need to know the formula f plus v equals e plus 2. Again, this is Euler's theorem. So we're going to plug in our knowns. f is 11, v is 11, edges, are, edges is our unknown, so n plus 2. Well, we simplify the left side, we find that 22 is equal to n plus 2. And then we can use basic algebra to solve this and find that n must be equal to 20. Well, since n represents the number of edges, we know that this particular shape would have 20 edges. And again, this works for all polyhedrons, including prisms and pyramids. 
Now we're moving away from polyhedrons and looking at things that are not polyhedrons. So these have curves. They're still very um, important shapes and we will be doing a lot with them. A cylinder, think of a pop can. A cylinder is a 3D solid with a circle for the base and one side, I'm sorry, one circular side. And if you notice, we have some measurements that would be helpful to us here. We have the height, which is going to connect the two uh, centers of the circles. And then we have the radius, which is the radius of, this, of each of the bases. Now we have a cone, which is a 3D solid with a circle for the base and one side that meets at a point. So essentially what we have here is we have a circle for the base. We still have a radius, which is at the center of the circle. And the height, keep in mind, heights have to make perpendiculars. So they're going to make a perpendicular with that point where it meets. So this is very much like a pyramid in the fact that it meets at a point, but it has a circular base, so it can't really be considered a pyramid. So we call this a cone. So think of um, a street cone, for example. Or a birthday hat, like was just pointed out. A sphere is a 3D solid shaped like a ball where every point on the surface is the same distance from the center. So when we've seen circles in the past, now we're seeing the same idea, only the radius could go in any direction and still be the same distance from that center point. All right, there are no you try nows today, so go ahead and come tomorrow with questions, and there will be some practice for you to work in class. Thanks and have a great day.